Hi Emma, how are you doing? Hi Matthew, nice to see you. Good stuff, it's great to see you. Um, I was just thinking when we was we actually last sort of like saw each other and I was thinking it was Canada but you told me it was Texas. Yeah, I think it was the last uh, Lone Star Guitar Festival. Oh yeah, the last ever. So that's finished up, that's a shame, that was a great festival. Oh, it was really fun. It, uh, it just wound up sort of being too much to coordinate and... And, you know, it was pretty ambitious to hold a guitar festival in a very tiny Texas town. Yeah, it was cool, though. It was cool. I mean, I think I made that even more challenging with my sort of like, I remember I'd, I'd come from Canada to the States. Oh, yeah. and I think I'd made, I'd, I'd made some sort of outrageous comment about Donald Trump on stage in Montreal and it managed to find its way all the way to Texas. So yeah. I was like, oh, my God. Um, I'd, I was worried if I would get in. Or if there would be like protests at the gig, yeah. Um, that was great fun. But you're in Canada just now, right? You're yeah. in Hamilton. Yeah, I'm in Hamilton for now. Yeah. For now, though, because I've heard noises that you're moving. Uh, you're you're moving to the other side. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna move to uh, Nova Scotia, which is um, amazing. I'm sort of ready for a move, and I I did my undergrad out there, and I've always been thinking about a move back to the coast. And uh, okay, cool. You know, now since got nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, like, it's just like everybody's sort of deciding. Like, I don't know about you, but I was like, maybe I could become a farmer. Yeah, you know, because with like with the pandemic, I was like, maybe I could move to an island and like keep animals or like yeah. you know tend the land. You're like, what am I doing? Like, what am I thinking about? Yeah. Like, you know. But, I mean, but you're going to Nova Scotia. Yeah. It's awesome. I mean, I actually have been like really busy the last year and a half, but just I think the absence of concerts and sort of not being on the road constantly gave yeah. me a little time to sort of think and then uh <laughs> but then also it's sort of a really convenient time to move right because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know i'll have yeah. time to pack <laughs> yeah well i mean there's nothing else to do yeah um so you're moving from that beautiful old house in hamilton that like was this like that that house had so much character so it must be difficult to say goodbye to like the town and all the stuff there Gone. Just cut <laughs> yeah. off. Love it. Love it. Well, I mean, Piece I, of cake. I love that house, but, you know, I really, I realized, especially after, you know, sitting in it for the last few months, like, yeah. what I don't love about houses is cleaning them or fixing them. <laughs> Fair enough. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I know so. that. It's an old house, too. It's probably needed quite a lot of upkeep. Yeah. 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 Yes. And it's beautiful. I, okay. I didn't do any of it, so... All right. So you're not even looking back over your shoulder. It's not like, no, no, someone else's problem like, now. See you later. Yeah, yeah cool. <laughs> Excellent. Well, listen, thank you so much for coming on uh, Gallery of Guitar and for um, uh, curating a piece because uh, it's just lovely to have you. And, you know, I think we've had um, before yourself, we've had like, you know, an accordionist friend of mine playing like a studious. We've had like Thomas Villato on uh, playing some Villa Lobos. We've had, you know, oh, Bradford Werner, who you know well from the Canadian oh, yeah. guitar scene, um, on talking about all of his amazing This Is Classical Guitar, and Uros Baric, a great friend of mine from Slovenia, playing some Bach. So it's just becoming um, a sort of great community of curators, all bringing whatever music they're working on or whatever it is they want to sort of highlight. Um, and you've uh, you've brought some of the music of uh, Katarina Pratton, which is uh, amazing. So tell me tell me more about the the video that you're creating for the channel, and a little bit more about uh, the piece and, and Pratton herself. Sure. Um, so I recorded a piece uh, from my last album uh, by by Pratton, and it's called Puck Number no. Two. It's part of her set of two pieces called Fairy Sketches, mm -hmm. which are, um, both of them are based on sort of characters from um, English folklore, nice. and. Um, and she had a, quite a few pieces like that. And I think a lot of her pieces, the ones that are like we're most familiar with are these sort of really beautiful, but also quite melancholy pieces. Yeah. Um, these sort of sad things like uh, sadness, forgotten, a lost <laughs> love, these things. Yeah. Um, I mean, she was a real pro at being depressed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she was really emo. Sounds like most guitarists um, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but what I love about her music uh, is that she really, even when she was writing sort of um, pieces for amateurs or sort of intermediate pieces, she would use, you know, the whole fretboard. Yeah. Almost all of her pieces, uh, you know, go from the first to the 17th fret. She uses a load of different techniques. So even though she's writing things that are really accessible to play, mm -hmm. you don't need to have like a huge amount of technique to do it, but it's still like such high quality music. Yeah, that's because she was an so excellent playable. player, wasn't it? I mean, you know, this is the thing about sometimes a guitarist composer is that like 
you can even see it as someone gets better through their output. Their pieces get more yeah. adventurous because they're actually improving themselves, you know. Um, but she isn't like that. You know, you can see you can see that her knowledge of the fingerboard is exemplary. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And actually, I mean, I would really recommend that people check out her guitar method because in it, I think we see so much stuff that you don't see in other methods from the time. Like she actually sort of describes different ways of um, like getting different colors and she'll like sort of illustrate that with a passage and like indicate where on the fretboard you could play that. That's very specific. She's got sort of her own like kind of strumming techniques she developed mm. as well that you don't see anywhere else <laughs> um, and her sort of own notation for this kind of like um, sort of a sort of half circle kind of rascado kind of strumming okay, yeah. and you know stuff is like she really had very, it must have been really awesome technique. Yeah. I mean, by all accounts it was, yeah. but the fact that we have like such a clear record of it yeah. also is, yeah. it's really cool. Mm -hmm. And I mean, her exercises in her method are so good as well. Like, oh, okay. you know, if you're, if you're tired of the usual arpeggios, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she's got tons that are just fabulous okay. and they're all so musical. Like her slur exercises all sound like little pieces and it's yeah. just a joy yeah. to play them. It's great when, when good players actually, um, write these little short miniature exercises from a melodic or harmonic sort of point of view they're not just literally you know repeating ad nauseum just finger patterns you know it's actually like yeah. okay the, because you're actually then teaching the building blocks of good musicianship through these exercises so you're improving both technically and musically at the same time I mean it's funny there is definitely that argument you know and I mean I know you know this as a teacher as well of like okay we put technique over here and we put musicianship over here and like the two shall never meet you know it's like you know we yeah. practice them totally <laughs> individually and it's um it can work sometimes for particular students mindset at a particular time but I love to see um particular characters in the guitar world who have done this they've sort of mirrored or mirrored the two uh, right yeah. away I mean Louise Walker is another example of I mean another example of a female guitarist um, and composer and performer and her method the, the is it the tag like a training I mean I use it quite a lot she steals from other people as well and borrows but it's contextualising everything very musically all the way through um, Sagreras yeah. is another one it's not obviously female but it's another composer guitarist who's able to go you're going to enjoy playing this and you're going to get something yeah. out of it technically. And you're also going to learn something about harmony and melody as you go, you know. Um, yeah. Okay, so we should check out we should check out Pratton's method as well as obviously check, checking out at the end of this video. I'll put a link so people can hear your performance of, of the fairy sketch. Um, great. Yeah, because it, it's going to be great. And hopefully it's an introduction to people to uh, to the music of Pratton, certainly. But this comes, you were saying this comes from the, the, the most latest album you did, which was, was it Wake the Sigh? Yeah, it was called Wake the Sai, and um, it's, it was all sort of rare uh, rare tunes from the 19th century, mm -hmm. and it's all happened to be written by women at yeah, the time. Yeah, cool, yeah. And um, yeah, it was a really kind of special project for me. Uh -huh. It actually happened because I, I accidentally sort of bought a copy of a Stauffer <laughs> accidentally. guitar. Accidentally. <laughs> so, how did this happen? I've got another guitar. <laughs> Like, yeah, yeah. I, I make those kind of accidents I'm sure it's all the time. happened to you. Yeah, 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 I've had a few accidents in my life. <laughs> <laughs> really expensive accidents, though. But yeah, 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 yeah. okay. Um, but so yeah, I, I kind of got carried away when I was talking to the luthier, uh, yeah. Mio Jagster donor, and then I had this instrument and thought, like, what the fuck am I going to do with this? <laughs> um, <laughs> and then yep. at, the, at the same time, um, there an opportunity came up to do a residency in Lübeck in Germany. Nice. Uh, through GayDoc, which is an organization that supports uh, sort of women in all different fields of the arts. Mm, okay. And so I just kind of was rolling around like an idea that I might be able to do for that residency and that could involve this guitar. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I thought I had no idea if there was any music from that period um, written by women. Mm -hmm. Aside from like I knew about Emilia Giuliani. Of course. And I knew a little bit about Pratton. But even that, like I just kind of had a foggy idea that they existed, yeah. you know, so yeah. Um, yeah, so I thought I would just check it out and see what I could find. Mm -hmm. And much to my delight, uh, there's loads of music. Tons. Yeah, exactly. So, You're sort of thinking, I'm going yeah. to be scrambling around in the dark here trying to find something. And you go, oh, actually, there's absolutely loads. You know, it's a, yeah. it's a usual story, really. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. But uh, yeah, so that was um, so that was great. Just kind of to find, you know, all these pieces. And so apart from um, apart from Amelia Giuliani and Pratton, obviously, I mean, who else is on the record? 
Uh, Dolores de Goñi, oh, yeah. Spanish guitarist, mm -hmm. uh, who seems like she was pretty wild. Yeah. Uh, Julia Piston uh, from France, Julie Fondant from France, okay. uh, Susan C. Domit, who is uh, really, uh, there's not much known about That's her. That's a name I don't know, no. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I'll, I'll tell you about her in a second. Yeah. Uh, also, Angelina Panormo Huerta. Okay. Um, and I think... I think that's it. There's seven. Okay, cool. Wow. Yeah. Excellent. Um, yeah. So Susan Dama, this was so interesting for me because she, I just, I found two pieces that she wrote. So two polkas for guitar and they're just like cute little tiny pieces. Mm -hmm. They're, they're really compact, um, fun to play. And I just like, I couldn't find anything about her. And I spent, you know, hours and hours combing through the internet, yeah. trying to find like any <laughs> mention of her. And then I finally just started looking for her with sort of any other instruments. Okay. And she also wrote a couple of piano tunes, uh, which happily were reviewed at the time. Oh, nice. And so, and the reviews mentioned that she was sort of extremely young to be a sort of published composer. Mm. And so by that, like with that, I was then able to kind of narrow down like the dates I could look for and was able to track down like the record of her birth and then... Yeah. Uh, her okay. uh, found her death notice as well yeah. and then um <laughs> just because i knew where she was you know the sort of area then so, so i was really perplexed because i found a record that noted she was a spinster her whole life <laughs> okay but yeah. her um I, that's a really outdated word yeah, totally. <laughs> the, yeah. the record said spinster yeah so, of course yeah uh you know <laughs> occupation spinster, spinster. <laughs> Yeah. Anyways, that's the goal. Yeah, so yeah anyway. I know. Well, you've got to aim for um, something, haven't you? Like, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so I was just really perplexed because she stopped writing after she was, you know, in her mid twenties, and okay. so I was like, well, if she wasn't married. Like, yeah. You know, then, Where'd she then go? Why? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because she was teaching. She got these great reviews. She was publishing mm. stuff. But she turns up later as a painter. Oh. You know, okay. I found all these reviews of her like really great artwork in different exhibits. So. Wow. Wow. You know, it's um. Like for me, yeah. this is one of the most fascinating things about this kind of work when you're looking yeah. back at these mm -hmm. figures is to just try and figure out like who they were. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's musical we have... archaeology. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but for me, it's really fascinating. Like just that sort of aspect of music history to try mm -hmm. and figure out like what it was actually like to be Susan Domit and yeah. or, you know, any of these <laughs> other composers. Because there's only a couple like um, that we have really much information on. Mm -hmm. Like we know quite mm -hmm. a bit about Pratt and... and um, that digital guitar archives is that it dga oh, editions yeah. uh -huh. they did yeah. like um super super um book that sort of combined everything that's ever been found about amelia giuliani yeah. so that's like yeah, a yeah. great resource but the other ones like it's just little bits mm -hmm. and bobs here and there that you have to yeah. sort of put together and figure out yeah you need to sort those reviews and those sort of like testimonies that sort of help you piece it together i mean someone like amelia giuliani is obviously a total virtuoso world-class player and um, so there is quite a lot of material there obviously like celebrating concertizing and different things but Dagoni is an interesting one um you know it's like so was is she did she one that had a duet with her husband and a cellist or something like that is that yeah? yes yeah yeah so yeah. she uh, she was born in Spain but we don't like there's no real information about what she was doing as a uh you know, as a young person, how she learned guitar or anything like that. Yeah. But we find her in her twenties playing gigs in Paris and <clears throat> you know around yeah. Europe and publishing did. some tunes. Yeah, um, yeah. And then I think this is just so cool. She just like hopped on a boat and went to uh, the United States and like <laughs> hit the ground running. You know, like just absolutely yeah. took the um, concert scene by storm. Yep. All the reviews of her are just absolutely glowing. Um, <laughs> she. You know by all accounts just was just a total shredder you know just an <laughs> absolutely like incredibly virtuosic player yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. um yeah and then uh, it's, it's also kind of uh she she traveled to the states with her husband like senor de Gonin, um <laughs> but he sort of evaporates somewhere along the line yeah. and uh we find her like touring with um uh mr knop uh, oh, who was cool. her second husband who's a, okay. I guess a really well-known cellist and mm -hmm. she wound up in like her later years just sort of publishing all her tunes under Mrs. Mm -hmm. Knopf. Oh right okay okay, okay. Yeah. yeah yeah so obviously you're seeing that as well so she's existing in two forms almost you know um, before that before that move to America which is such a brave a brave move as well I mean it's 
even now that's an extremely challenging thing for a young artist yeah. you know of any gender it's like okay where am i going am i am i going to set up my career here where i'm from and i'm established in some way and am i going to move mm -hmm. to america and like you know it's also having the skills you know um I'm not saying that they've been lost because obviously there's a, there's a, there is a high level of chamber music in the guitar scene, but the guitar did go into such a let's try and become almost like the concert pianist in terms of like the soloistic endeavor and ability um, that sort of chamber music was maybe lost. And there's an example of like, obviously she goes, plays fantastically, gets all these glowing reviews, which are almost Segovia-esque and they're sort of like, you know, they're dripping with like, you know, uh, mm -hmm. potential and promise and stuff. But like, the wonder, like the, the the having the chamber music skills to go and play, you know, in a in a duo with cello, I mean that's one of the hardest things I sort of struggle with sometimes is convincing the students now to actually do that because they don't know how wide that can spread their network, you know. Yeah, for sure. Musically, you know, and to see someone doing that in that time and having obviously established something else then over in America, that's 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 incredible. I mean, it's such a brave move. Yeah, and she, I mean, she was totally not, I don't understand why more people don't know about her, actually, because, I mean, yeah. she was really just known as, like, the best guitarist in America. Yeah, the same, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, she, um, the very first Martin X-Braced guitar was the Dagoni model, right? Like, she's wow. in there, like, consulting yeah. with this huge guitar company. Yeah, and, yeah it's like, legacy, having your name in a, yeah, and own a guitar of Martin. Yeah, Absolutely. Like, yeah, yeah. she was just huge. So it's, yeah. it's really, I, I mean, I recently read a, a book about the history of guitar in America and was just like where is this come on. person yeah, come yeah. on man like, yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah I know totally totally okay so wake the sigh so that's good so we'd enc I'd encouraging people I mean I'll put a link to that as well obviously like they're, you know people are going to get an introduction to Pratt and if they don't already know her um, but Wake the Sigh features seven uh, composers, which people are really um, should be should be checking out, especially for this this t this t type of repertoire from that period. It's, it really exemplifies it, and I think actually, even more so, some of the pieces are maybe less um, less about just writing another sonata or another set of studies. They're they're character pieces, you know, they're pieces that yeah. have a they sort of have a, a a thematic idea and content at them. And I know you're saying like with Pratt, and it's often very romantic and very melancholy but I mean of that period even the bel canto style that's coming out of Italy it's all incredibly um you know expressive sometimes mm -hmm. a wee bit much you know um, <laughs> that's that's a Scotsman saying that's, that's you've taken that too far that's a bit much you know like, <laughs> enough you know um mm -hmm. but it's fantastic and then so so Wake the Sight's been out for a while hasn't it it's been out for uh yeah it came out last October so it's been okay. out for a few months oh yeah. great well I mean obviously it'll be on all the things Spotify oh, yeah. and, and Apple Music and stuff so people can check I'll put links to I'll find it and then uh, people can sort of check these things out because I think you know with like the the more the more recent like you know 20th century and you know like I'm thinking of like uh, Ida Presti and Louise Walker and then of course like now we have just a plethora of um, phenomenal female performers um, and you know and, and, and some composer performers as well and some just people composing just for guitar it's more prevalent and now we're seeing a lot more of it it's still not anywhere near where it should be um, but it's obviously going in somewhat the right direction let's say so I mean um, it's nice for people to go back historically as well because I was, I was thinking about it the other day you know, you run um, the Hamilton uh, Festival over there in, in, in Canada and I'm running the guitar retreat here in Scotland. And I was thinking, like, as a festival director, I had to sort of... And it's, you know, I have problems with even what I'm going to say, but, like, you know, I was always making a concerted effort, let's say, to sort of include female performers um, and teachers in my roster of artists every year so that, like, the female students that were coming to participate in the retreat and perform young artists had role models people they could talk to play to and everything like that and it was just you know i was thinking about the other day and i was thinking okay like stephanie jones like anna vidovich you know like this should all be these people you know basic <laughs> I know, honestly like, what, like what? the not like i saw yesterday another poster for guitar festival that is just all men yeah and it's like yeah, yeah. I, you know, it's like, why did you make the decision to exclude women from your yeah. roster? And it probably wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have even been an actual, um, you know, decision that they didn't probably but it go, is. I am going to. But of In course the end, it is. If yeah, you of course, look at your course. poster and everyone yeah. looks the same, you're making a decision. You know, yeah, yeah, like, totally. Subconsciously or consciously, but it's probably subconsciously yeah. because it's just been like that forever. So therefore, like, you know, no one's ever said, I'm going to question that. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to say why, you know, and then the person goes, Oh wait a minute! You know I've never done it, but you know it's like, but I I find it I've 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 programmed um, players 
who are of the absolute highest caliber and have had people say to me oh I don't know who that is and I've said I can't believe I cannot believe that you know and like you know some of the yeah. most famous female guitarists come to play and then they go oh that's amazing I never knew that person existed and you're like I've not, I don't really understand why that's the case but like you <laughs> know. know okay yeah. you know well I'm glad you've had an introduction now let's keep that moving forward you know but um uh, so it's great well I'm encouraging people very much to sort of uh, have a look at that album I'd uh, for some reason, I had thought that album had not hadn't been out for as long as it has. So I mean, I'm sure there'll be people even watching this who you know watch Gallery of Guitar and just you know the internet, YouTube's so full of so many guitar videos. Will will already know of the album, and um, that hopefully that spreads a little bit further. And then before that, because um, an album that I uh, I really like by yourself, and it's also why I've um, sort of reached out to you to to come and create something for the channel. It's this thematic idea of your programming. And your output. So the album before that is the Canadiana album, mm -hmm. which is all Canadian music for guitar, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a, a collection of arrangements of like sort of really Canadian or really famous Canadian yeah. folk tunes. So yeah. A um, couple of tunes by Joni Mitchell, Gordon Great. Lightfoot, Stan Rogers. And then there's nice. a, a suite um, that was dedicated to me by William Beauvais. That's kind of like a... Oh, yeah. It's got a sort of finger style feel yeah. to it. Like it's, yeah, yeah. it's kind of like a... Uh, it's, it's got a nice like pop sort of yeah, sensibility yeah, yeah, yeah. so it sort yeah, of fits yeah. in with the yeah. other stuff but yeah yeah I just I love the, like um I love making albums that make sense yeah, <laughs> yeah <exactly. laughs> you know like where the the music yeah. sort of has a some kind of continuity to it and I think a lot about that in concert programming as well like oh, yeah but I think I think also know. like maybe the f because albums are very they're getting more adventurous now let's say from classical performers and I think sometimes classical musicians now they confuse like adventurous with like shocking or sort of like ex extremely <laughs> unconventional do you know what I mean so they go oh isn't this classical player amazing because they can do like electric guitar and classical guitar and like banjo or something like that and you're like I, to be honest that to me is as weird having that together on a cd or yeah. an album let's say is as weird as having like a back suite right next door to a piece by Andrew York, right next door to a piece by like, you know, Turina, next door, you know, sometimes when you get those Naxos CDs and you're just like, this is just what that player had under their fingers at that time when they won that competition. And that's fine. And as a record of that, that's interesting. But conceptually as an album, it's not really much of a listening experience. And it's actually very difficult to jump between all of these eras, centuries, stylistic th sort of things. Um, you know, I Well, like I just always think when I go to put on a record, I it's like there's a certain kind of music I want to hear. Right? Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, I'm, I'm in the mood for some Baroque music and I put yeah, that on. You exactly. Know? It's not like exactly. I'm in the mood for eight different kinds of music. Yeah, I find that tough. And I mean, <laughs> also that, but that, that comes out of our concert, you know, promoters and organizers saying, oh, this is, what a, this is what an accepted classical concert is. It's a piece from the Baroque, at least from the 19th century. And then, you know, the, our audience are going to hate your contemporary piece. So could you please talk to them before that and tell yeah. them what it's all about? <laughs> do you know what I mean? I mean, like, and you're sort of going, oh God, I'm going to do another one of these concerts. You know, yeah. I love this idea of like, okay, so you've had an, an you know, a, okay, it's particularly 19th century guitar music and it's guitar music of women and there's, there's that 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 is enough to draw that right together but then of course the actual way that they're that's why I was saying like these are character pieces a lot of them and they're stylistically very interesting um they're not like even the guitarists of the 19th century trying to emulate the piano composers like a Beethoven or a Mozart or something like that mm -hmm. they're people doing their own thing and following their own sort of path and in the Canadian album um like having the Joni Mitchell on it, it's just it, right away you're like, okay, this isn't just a classical guitar album. This is something very different, you know. Um, yeah. And I, I sort of applaud that because there's there's but there's more of it. We're definitely seeing a bit more of it, but it's uh, still it's you still when people do their first album of guitar music, I was guilty of this. It's like a a potpourri of what you can play, you know, um, yeah. what you studied when you were at college, you know. So do you plan to uh, develop the Canadian idea like with a second edition? Obviously, like you're going to be moving to another part of Canada, Nova Scotia. I mean, what's what's up next? Uh, well, I actually just released a single uh, mm -hmm. of another Joni Mitchell tune. I released an arrangement of both sides now, oh, uh, which is another arrangement by Floyd Turner. And oh, one that's, Floyd. Uh, <laughs> it didn't make it to the... Um, to the original album, but it's it's one I always loved. Like the arrangement's really beautiful, and I'd mm -hmm. played it quite a lot, so I, I wanted to have it out there. Mm -hmm. And then it also coincided. Um, Fingerstyle Guitar Journal just uh, published um, the sheet music of Floyd's ah. arrangement, sort of alongside an interview with me. So that so people like, can get it out. and check it yeah. out and play it. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. 
Um, so yeah, so that's nice. So now the the, the tunes out there and the uh, the music's out there, which is great. Yes. Uh, but the next project actually is um, it's an album where I commission eight new tunes from eight Canadian composers, and okay. it will all be based on the life and or works of Canadian Impressionist painter William Blair Bruce, who okay. uh, I'm actually related to. <laughs> and he was a Hamilton uh, painter, although he spent a lot of his career in France and then later in Sweden. Okay. Um, and quite an important Canadian painter. But so for me, it's a really interesting project. It's sort of personally relevant, but then it's really sort of very relevant to Hamilton. Yeah. Um, and I think it'll be really interesting to have like the composers are all very, very different. So, mm -hmm. the, I mean, the pieces will all sound mm -hmm. like very different, but I think it will be really interesting to look at the sort of common thread of Blair Bruce's works and see how that sort of runs through them all and see what happens. So do they, do they pick a painting or do you pick a painting and then they write a piece to that painting or what's the... Well, they can pick a painting. Um, like three of the tunes are done already and that has been basically people just sort of choosing a painting and sort of writing mm -hmm. a piece about it. Um, but there's another composer, Mo Twizar, who's... He, like Blair Bruce had this very sad uh, episode in his life where he was sort of down on his luck in France and decided to come back to Canada and do a big exhibit of all of his works. And like okay. raise a lot of money so he could, yeah. uh, you know, live. <laughs> um, <laughs> Survive. But, uh, unfortunately, he uh, came to Canada on one boat. He packed up all his paintings that were on a different boat, and that boat sank. Uh, so okay. like, mm -hmm. that's uh, mm -hmm. that was pretty tragic. So, anyways, no, not not as tragic it, as if it had been the um, other way around, though. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, 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 um, not great. Yeah. yeah, but anyway, so Mo uh, is thinking of writing a tune about that. Okay, you know, well that, yeah, because it's a, so, the journey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. And so, who else is involved? Like, who else have you commissioned? Uh, our good friend Tim Phelan. Oh, yes, um, fantastic! That'll be a great piece. Good. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Christine Duncan, who okay. uh, yeah. writes a lot of piano music, but is also written for, uh, like, for example, um, Trio Tanger, like yeah. Louis Trepanier and Jerome. Yeah, Desans, Louis. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. Trio. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, so she's pretty familiar with guitar. Uh, two people in Hamilton, Jeff McFadden, uh, sure. again, yeah. our friend, yeah. and yeah. then Christina Volpini, who's um, a, a young composer who's written, I think, only one other piece for guitar at this point. Oh, okay, nice. Uh, Amy Brandon in Truro yep. and Dale Cavanaugh. Oh, Dale, great. Um, well, that's good. You have a yeah. you have a really you have a very diverse mix of pieces there. Then it sounds like it'll yeah. be. Okay, great. So that's the next project. And I mean, the name... Oh, and Craig Visser in Ottawa. Oh, Sorry, was, yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay, cool. The name yeah. William Blair Bruce is the most Scottish name. I mean, if it was Mick Bruce, that would be it. I mean, it's so Scottish, William Blair Bruce. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'll do a little bit digging as well. It's fascinating. There must be something. There must be something in the bloodline. You know? Oh, yeah, um, yeah. His family mm -hmm. was Scottish. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Um, and so an Impressionist, um, is it... Is it is it landscapes been impressionist style or is it what what is it does it have any? Uh, yeah, some of his most famous pieces are these um, sort of Swedish seascapes. Uh, okay. He later went on to he was living in Sweden um, on an island there, which which now has turned into an artist center. It's still like the the wow. Blair Bruce artist residency or something like this. Mm. Um, so uh, yeah, there's a series of absolutely stunning, just sort mm. of sunsets and sunrises over the over okay. the sea. Um, but then yeah, it's all kinds of stuff: portraits, uh, you know, scenes of daily life, some landscapes. Yeah, yeah. One of my favorite ones. It's, it's so small and so um, it's not an important piece at all. But it's just a little tiny painting of the Hamilton Harbor here, and it's called mm -hmm. Moonlight Over Canada. Mm -hmm. And it's like it's so yeah. they're just beautiful. They're really yeah. stunning. Yeah. I'll check them out. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, I feel remiss or ignorant to have not uh, yeah. to not know who this is, but um, I'll definitely check it out. And it sounds like a fascinating project. Again, it's just testament to you um, coming at an artistic output from a different perspective from sort of the norm in the in the guitar world. And it's uh, it's to be applauded. And I'm sure people watching this today um, and then sort of checking out, you know, some of your other albums will be. I'll be hooked on the idea that everything you sort of release has a new a new theme behind it and a new thread that sort of just ties it together. So, yeah. um, and it's great and it's very inspiring for the composers as well because I'm sure, you know, composers are always looking for commissions, but nine times out of ten they're commissioned for like 
we want an eight minute accessible piece for an audience to be premiered once, put on a shelf and never ever heard again. <laughs> like, yeah, you know? yeah. Like I've commissioned a couple other pieces in the past, but this is sort of mm-hmm. my first yeah. like, big commissioning project. So it's it's really interesting for me to... It'll be, be uh, I'll, I'll come back and interview you on that process uh, right. a year from now and you can you can tell me, you know, if, you're, if your hair's still the same colour, like, you know, because every time I've yeah. done that, I'm like... <laughs> Oh my god, you know, the deadline has passed. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, pl- I'm playing this in a week. I don't know what it looks or sounds like, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah, you get, it's, it's always fun. Um, it's, it's, I don't know, I, I find that process, it's, it's probably one of the most uh, nerve wracking processes you can do, actually, because you're sort of bringing, helping bring these new things to life to a certain degree, you know, and um, yeah. it's, it, it's, it's very different to playing. I don't know, the standard rep, you know, it comes with a huge, huge amount of sort of like different responsibilities, different challenges, but it's so rewarding. So when, when do you, when do you sort of envisage, I mean, it's probably an impossible question, but when do you envisage it being out and realized and all together? And well, um, kind of depends on when the funding comes through. Always. Yeah. You know, so mm-hmm. I've acquired funding to record the project and like, okay. you know, actually do the record, but I don't yeah. have all the funding in place yet for all the commissions. So yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, here in Canada, July is a good month to hear back on your grant uh, applications. Yeah. So I'm fingers uh, crossed. OK, well, yeah, we're crossed so, as well. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. OK, cool. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's definitely it's definitely moving forward for sure. Which is good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good, good. And so, um, what about Hamilton then? Because if you're moving all the way to Nova Scotia, um, is is Hamilton Festival continuing, or are you are you sort of wrapping that up, or what? No, what's, what's actually, um, the we were planning to wrap it up in 2020. That was going to be oh, the last okay. festival. So. Um, it just wrapped up. That's a shame. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> that was COVID. that. It didn't yeah. have a big bang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah I know. Yeah. It's annoying. Yeah. I share your same... I mean, I'm not closing down the, the guitar retreat at all. It's going to come back in 2022, but there's been no way to run it Yeah. like it should be run. Do you know, you would be doing something so disappointing for everybody, you know, in the last two years, really. So, yeah. Um, but you won't... I mean, that can't be it because you, you've got the festival director bug big time. So you'll be... You'll be coming I know. up with something else. I have you know? this kind of like perverted drive to like present guitar <laughs> events. Yeah, so. exactly. Exactly. I mean, there should be some sort of group that we could all join. Yeah, I know. You know? <laughs> like, but we'll see. I mean, I still, um, I'm the, one of the directors at the Collegiate Peaks Guitar Retreats oh, uh, in yeah. Colorado, um, which we're, we're not running this year, but we're expecting it to come back next year. Great. And then um, I'm also co director this year of Guitar Fest West in Calgary. Yes, 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 yes. Which yeah. I've. A sort of a, a Canadian colleague who's now over here in Scotland studying Tim Tim Beatty. Did he yes. not compete in that? And, and yeah, yeah, he won it last yeah. year. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you probably end up with a few Scottish entries because Tim's Excellent. Tim's been enjoying his time over here in Scotland and very busy. So I think he's uh, staying on to be doing an artist diploma here in Glasgow at the Conservatoire next year. So oh, he is great. He'll be around for great. a bit. And, and there's a few. We've got um, Evan as well, who you'll yeah. know from not too far away, and one of, of Tim's old students as well. He's here and. Okay. There's a, yeah, the Canadians, we can't get rid of them, you know. It's, just... it's like, a, like a fungus. <laughs> it's great. No, it's brilliant. <laughs> it's brilliant. Um, so, yeah, so Guitar Fest West. So maybe you'll, yeah, and that's that's a competition and, and a festival as well. Uh, it's an online competition and okay. a youth a youth festival. Oh, okay, cool. So, yeah, Excellent. So that's good, taking good, good. place uh, the first week of August. And then do you think you'll do, I mean, I'm already thinking about it, in Nova Scotia you could do a sort of like, a really different type of festival out there. You, yeah. So many Well, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens. You know, yeah. I'm going to get out there and see the lay yeah, of the yeah. land. Yeah, and... exactly, exactly. Noise it all up a bit. That's great. Good, yeah. good. That'd be yeah. brilliant. Well, listen, um, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the game. Yeah, it's been great um, chatting with you. Oh, it's been it's good to catch up. It's been too long.